Hello, broadcasters. Welcome to episode 152 of the StreamYard Live Town Hall. Uh, my name is Gage, and I'm here with Dan, of course. Dan, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you? Good. I accidentally double clicked that uh, intro video, if you uh, notice. But yeah, things are things are good. We have some fun things to uh, announce tonight, so stay tuned for for that. I think uh, a couple. I think you'll be quite quite excited for 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 them. And for anyone new here, uh, Dan and I are the founders of Streamyard, and we do these town halls uh, every single Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And we do them for for a few reasons. One is to stay in tune with all of you, go through the same flow uh, you all do when you do your your own shows. Uh, two is to answer any of your questions. So if there's anything. Uh, you'd like us to touch on tonight, feel free to leave it in the chat and we'll do our very best to, to get to them. But yeah, we love answering uh, your qu questions and discussing your, your, your points. And then I always mention uh, the three pillars of StreamYard, which are ease of use, stability, and professional stream. So if you're about those three things, StreamYard is the tool for you. Uh, cool to see where everyone's tuning in from. We've got uh, people from Fort Lauderdale, Texas, Indianapolis, uh, Brazil, Thank you all for uh, for mentioning. It's always cool to see all the uh, different states and uh, countries. Um, before I forget, uh, we have lots of awesome shows. So we got StreamYard Spotlight uh, the first Thursday of every month at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, which is a show where uh, Dana and Kelsey interview uh, you guys. They they highlight people having success in the StreamYard community and what they're doing with their their shows. So if you'd like to be featured on that, uh, be sure to reach out to uh, to Dana. I'm sure they'd love to feature you. Uh, we also have YouTube channel reviews with Dee and Daniel the second Saturday uh, of every month. Really great show, especially if you're trying to improve uh, your overall YouTube game. They'll give you live advice when it comes to titles, thumbnails, uh, posting schedules, content. Uh, really, really great, great advice and really cool to get it uh, live from two experts there. Uh, we have Enhance Your Live Streaming the last Tuesday of every month with uh, Nick Nimmin, another expert when it comes to uh, live streams and video in, in general. Uh, really great, great content that you want to miss if you're trying to improve your live streams. And then we also have live reviews the first and thir th first and third Saturday uh, at noon PST with Charles and Christian. Uh, it's a fun show uh, where again they just do uh, live live reviews of of live streams, live streams on live streams. And then we have uh, open office hours for any additional questions uh, with Mel and Julie at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, first and third week uh, on Tuesdays, and you can find those in the Facebook community group. Uh, one thing we've been doing is uh, fun facts every week so you, we can get to know a bit more about you guys and you can learn a little bit about us. And this week we had favorite uh, favorite car company, kind of a random one, but still still fun. Hopefully, <laughs> What's your favorite? Well, I like the random ones. Yeah, they're fun. What's your favorite car company, Dan? So, yeah, I'm not a huge, huge car guy. It was more so in high school. Mine's probably Ford simply because most cars I've owned have been Fords and they've been around for a long time, so they have a cool history. But not like in love with any car company, I would say. How about you? Cool. Uh, yeah, I've definitely never been a major, major car person either. I have to say, always been a pretty, pretty big Elon fan. So Tesla's probably these days my uh, my favorite favorite car cool. company just because I think Elon's pretty cool. But um, yeah, that's probably it. So yeah, cool. in the chat, let us know if you guys are passionate about a particular one. Uh, let's see what we have in the comments. Uh, TD, TD Fish Paradise says... <laughs> Uh, going live, but live stream is auto end. Why, sir? So, TD, the um, I'd be curious where you're streaming to, but if uh, if you're using the direct integration that StreamYard has, it should only go live when you hit the go live button. It should only end when you hit the end button. If you are using custom RTMP or, or uh, yeah, custom RTMP to go to YouTube or or wherever, that will how that works will depend on your settings there in terms of what happens when you stop sending the feed or or continue. But if you go to streamyard.com/contact uh, they can um, help you further on that. Yeah, and I guess two other potential points. So one is if you do leave the studio, eventually it will end the broadcast. Uh, or the other one that could happen is if you're streaming copyright content by chance, and I, I don't know if you are, but if you are, sometimes the platforms will cut it off early. It still won't stop on StreamYard's end, though. Uh, Emamel says, can we think of showing comments from the audience on pre-recorded live videos? Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Emamel. Definitely something that we talked about uh, before we launched it, um, but we just want to get that first version out. Um, but it's something that we we would love to add at, at some point, I think. Right, Dan? I think so. Yeah. And I'd be specifically be curious, like, are you talking to show them on screen like we are right now or just be able to see them when you're live or when the pre-recorded is live? I'm guessing yeah. on screen, but maybe let us know. Yeah, that's a good good point. I was thinking uh, dynamic, but yeah, that probably makes more sense if it was just uh, an overlay or something. Let us know, Emamel. 
Sounds like there's quite a few Tesla fans in the chat. Some Toyotas, Jeeps. Cool. Actually, there's a lot, a lot of variety. Yeah, there's a lot of different companies out there. Yeah, I always forget how many different ones there are. Uh, TDA Prep says, just started live streaming and using your platform. Uh, any advice for beginning the journey? <laughs> Welcome, TDA, TDA Prep. It's a cool cool question. And congrats on on getting started. That's often the, uh, the most difficult part. Uh, I'm sure people in the chat probably have awesome uh, advice. For me specifically, I think consistency. As you can see, we're at <laughs> episode 152. So Dan and I have actually done quite a good job of, of that one. But um, consistency, I think, really pays off. If you, if you choose a time so people know when you're going to show up, um, and give them something that they they expect and 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 you iterate and based on their feedback improve but make sure you're showing up for them every single week um you almost certainly figure it out i think so consistency i think is the most important one from my perspective what about you dan yeah that's always been the number one for me i mean have, just having like a regular schedule almost to kind of add to what you said whether it's once a week once a month something where your audience can kind of expect you to be there maybe it's once a day it really depends what you're doing but i guess the other one i would add to or sorry, go ahead, Dan. I, I agree. I think consistency is the number one for me. I think the other one I would add to, especially if you're uh, nervous or it's like a bigger, bigger stream or bigger event, is uh, you can't ever really over test. So I would definitely like do unlisted streams on YouTube or go to a group and just make sure you're really comfortable with with the flow of things and and, and make sure that it all feels natural before the uh, unless you're maybe you're already doing it though. But yeah, if you haven't done it yet, uh, make sure you're comfortable before you actually go live. Tony says, I got approved for LinkedIn Live. Are we allowed only to schedule broadcast there because there's no place to go live instantly? Congrats on getting access, uh, Tony. Um, any thoughts on that one? You should you should be able to go live without scheduling. So yeah, maybe give it another try, Tony. If 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 it's not working, feel free to reach out to uh, StreamYard support. But yeah, I think if you just select LinkedIn and don't click the any of the scheduling options, you yep. should be able to just go live. Yep. Um, also, a quick note on on uh, on that. I, I, if you if you're someone who's applied for LinkedIn Live in the past and 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 you weren't accepted, I would definitely encourage to you to try again because I know um, they're constantly uh, reevaluating, and I think they're accepting more more people now than they did maybe like a, a year ago. So definitely definitely try that again. Cool. Uh, Michael says, "Is there any minimum system requirement to be able to run Streamyard smoothly?" It's a good question, uh, Michael. We don't have any formal requirements posted because we're always trying to make sure that no matter what kind of device someone is on, that they can still actually use the tool and have a good experience. And one way we do that is because it is uh, cloud-based. So a lot of the processing doesn't actually happen on your computer. It happens on StreamYard's computer slash server. So that helps uh, a lot. Uh, that being said, there are, like, if you're trying to run it on a Commodore <laughs> or something like that from super long time ago, you might, uh, it might be, be difficult, but any, any modern computer from the last five to 10 years should work just fine. Any thoughts on that one, Dan? Yeah, I guess most important things is if you can connect right into the, like with an ethernet cable instead of using Wi-Fi, that helps a lot. Not really specific to the computer, just more about the internet. I find that's usually the biggest thing. And then the features, if you are, like if you are on a really old computer or something or a very low power computer, some of the features that are more heavy you might want to try to avoid those a bit if possible. So like green screen, for example, is a little heavier on your computer. And then so is screen sharing, but we have like a PowerPoint sharing and video sharing, a PowerPoint sharing feature now, and we've always had video sharing. Both of those are a little lighter than screen sharing. So that's sort of like an advanced tip. You should be fine on almost any device still screen sharing. Cool. Uh, should we go ahead and make the first uh, feature announcement, Dan? Cool. Let's so some it. of you, or sorry, go ahead. Let's do it. So if you guys regularly tune in to uh, some of the StreamYard shows on, on YouTube, you might have already gotten a sneak peek. Uh, but one thing that recently went live is uh, virtual backgrounds. So we've always had, you know, I've got an actual, I've got a green screen here. So for a while, not always, I guess, for a while, we've had the ability to replace your background with a green screen. But obviously, if you don't have a green screen, it can take time to actually ship one. Or maybe you have a guest that wants to change their background and they don't have one. Uh, we now have the ability to change your background, even if you don't have a green screen. Um, so... Dan, you want to show how it how it works? Let's do it. Yeah, it's kind of weird for you because you have an actual. I, could, I could be cheating. You wouldn't know, right? Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't count. Cool. 
So yeah, pretty sweet there. You can see Dan doesn't actually have a green screen, but he can replace his uh, background. It's the first version of it. So uh, we have an awesome team that's going to keep iterating on it and see uh, see how much we can tweak it and how much customization we can can have. But um, if you're just looking for a super sol or a, a simple solution to uh, replace your background, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not going to be quite as good as, for comparison, I'll, I'll show you how uh, versus like a physical green screen, I'll show you how mine looks. I'll use the same background as Dan here. But you can see for mine, it's uh, it's a little bit, um, the edges are a little bit sharper. And that's just because uh, the way the tech works, it's able to, it's much easier to detect grain and just remove it versus using AI and guessing, right? So, but that being said, it's actually not a massive difference. Like it's, it, it uh, Dan's, Dan's does look pretty, pretty solid. So yeah, hopefully you guys are excited for that feature. Curious if, uh, if you'll use it and also curious um, if there's any cool default backgrounds that you'd like to see for it. You can obviously upload your, your own, which should be a fun uh, a fun, fun one for you guys to uh, experiment with, but let us know um, how it's going with it. Cool. I've always loved this background with this super nice house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always enjoy how often I see people uh, using it. I'll, I'll like, hey, I recognize that when I'm seeing live streams, which is fun. What, one thing that as well, so you can also blur your background. Yep, the bokeh effect. <laughs> yeah. That one actually works really nice just because there's less to like remove. So it's, you almost don't even notice that it is a, an effect it kind of just looks like your camera is focused on you hey yeah it's cool i like it uh my cluttered garage says i like the channel name that's cool <laughs> whenever it's like garage sales or something it's difficult to switch between brand comments and other tabs would be great to have them on one screen in different windows it's good good feedback ed appreciate that yes one thing we're we're definitely exploring and considering is the ability to maybe pop certain things out or maybe even rearrange certain things so stay tuned Hey, Pete, congrats for, for that. Thanks for sharing. Glad that uh, all the way in Australia, glad that it still got to you pretty, pretty quick, but that's super cool. I'm curious, what did you, uh, was it a duck or a sweater? What did you end up, uh, what did you end up getting? Uh, let's see. Flyboy Drummer says, what kind of lighting are you both using? Looks great. I think Dan, you actually, is just like your computer and <laughs> standard lighting, right? Yeah, mine's pretty simple. So you actually have a nice lighting setup, but yeah, I have pretty nice, yeah. I have three monitors, and then I just put screens like white. Open, you know, open up like a Google tab or something, just a white tab, and just have enough that it looks good enough. It's not yeah, perfect trying, by any means, but it does the trick. I was, I was trying to see if I could read uh, mine. I'll maybe leave it in the chat afterwards because I can't quite make it out. I think it's hyper photography <laughs> type light, but any any large bright light is. I'm sure light enthusiasts are probably thinking that's a terrible thing for me. <laughs> in my experience, any like large, bright. Yeah, light. there's there's definitely tiers, right? You can go for like the most basic setup, which is something like what I have, and then like the more advanced what you have, and then obviously you can just keep going and going. But when you're when you're getting started, I think just nailing the basics is usually good enough. Uh, Madros, it says how to add uh, destination TikTok or Instagram live. So we don't have direct integrations with these platforms yet, Madros, uh, simply because um, they don't actually offer them them yet. As soon as they do, we'd love to love to support them. Um, Instagram live obviously comes up a lot. I would be curious for for the group watching uh, tonight. How many of you? I assume a, a lot of you would use Instagram just based on past feedback. But TikTok specifically. If if that did oh, if TikTok ever did open up that API and we were able to stream there, curious how many of you are active on TikTok and if you'd actually use that would be cool to know. And active as a creator, not a consumer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not not necessarily. It's cool if you're active as a consumer too, but if you're actually creating stuff for sure. Lots of uh, good advice here for uh, the the early uh, new broadcasters. So appreciate those in the chat. Cool. Uh, Susan says, I use SY for three YouTube channels and I'm looking uh, forward to streaming my church cameras from three different computers with other browsers open for smooth switching. Very cool. Thanks for sharing, uh, Susan. Paranormal says, love StreamYard. Had my one year anniversary last month for my podcast. Congrats. That's a that's a big one year is a long time. So congrats on, on that. Cool. That is awesome. All right. Uh, I guess the other one we should quickly comment on. And again, some of you, uh, we actually, we did a sneak peek of it uh, a couple, a couple weeks ago, uh, but it's actually in the process of rolling out now. So you might actually already have access to it. If you don't have access to it now, check back maybe in a few hours and you likely will. And that is starred uh, comments. So this one, it, 
I have parentheses pin comments because in the it was often referred to that in uh, in previous discussions. But uh, now you actually have the ability. Um, this is really effective, I think, if you're working with a producer or or someone else on your team to any comment that um, say the show host needs to be focused on the stream or interviewing the guest. Someone in the background or the host themselves, if they're good at multitasking, can actually star uh, comments, and it will go to a separate section uh, that is called uh, starred. And then essentially, it's just like a a special section where you can sort of organize comments that you want to come back to and, and, and show during the stream and you can star unstar. It's pretty simple, but yeah, I think it is effective for uh, essentially collaborating and letting a producer pick out like, Hey, you should be chatting about these five points. And when you get to that, having a, a nice section where, you know, everything you're supposed to talk to has, has already been selected. Um, those of you who have uh, some of you did have early access to it. So if you have tried, uh, pinned comments would be curious any feedback you have same with virtual virtual backgrounds um, if, if you have had had a chance to uh, to use it that was actually my next uh, point is we have launched quite a few new features lately so any of the new features that 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 you're using just curious if there's anything you'd like to see different about them or if you have any ideas in terms of things we we should add to those features would be really great to know um, one of those obviously is slides so curious how how many of you are using them and how that's going um, and then same thing with um, the infinite scrolling uh, comments that's now actually live for for uh, misspelled feedback there. Uh, that's actually um, now live for uh, everyone now. So if you if you do have enough comments where where you actually experience the the need for infinite scrolling comments, uh, would be good to know how well that's uh, that's working for you. Cool. Probably pause. Give give some time to answer this. <laughs> yeah, I'll give give some time. Uh, have hopes. Football Hut says. Uh, virtual background is really great. Is there any way to have like a fade feature so that it can stop disappearing like Casper the the ghost? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by, do you know what is meant by fade feature or like how strong it is maybe? Is that what you mean? Have hopes? Yeah, that'd be my guess. Like tone uh, it down a bit because maybe like, you know, you lean back or you like you just completely disappear in some cases. Cool. So yeah, if that's what you mean, let us know. Uh, have have hope. We're definitely um, always going to be iterating on it and try and and trying to uh, to improve it. Um, but yeah, it's possible that maybe we would have a setting at some point to determine like how aggressive do you want background removal to to actually uh, be. Hopefully, we can get it to a place where um, you don't actually really need to select it. It's just sort of at an optimum point. But we'll continue continue yeah. testing. And um, yeah, if you have any any feedback, feel free to let us know now or or reach out to uh, support. Uh, Kurt says, hey, Gage, is your green screen fabric hanging up or that big oval thing you use uh, have to sitting, you have sitting to the side behind you? It's not, it's not actually, I mean, it's some kind of fabric, but it's not hanging up. It's, um, do you remember, you have one of these too, Dan, do you remember the name of it? You can no. come back to the, ch to the chat after. It's a great green screen. It folds up. Yeah. It's really nice. Um, but no, it's, yeah. it's just, it's a green screen I purchased that, that folds up nicely and has a stand. Yeah, and he did mention the big oval thing, so I think he knows what you're talking about. Oh, so he's asking one or the other. It's the big oval thing. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, like the five foot by seven foot, I think it is. It's nice, though, because it has, like, no wrinkles in it by default. Uh, I like that aspect of it. G. Albert says minimum requires requirements get off of dial up. Modem, I, I forgot about dial-up modem, but that is true. Dial-up modem, <laughs> dial-up modem is not uh, not a good choice, and will not will probably not not work. <laughs> sounds like no, most that people, would not be good. Yeah, sounds like most people are a fan of virtual backgrounds. Appreciate the uh, feedback there. Glad it's uh, works for you, Sebastian. Yeah, it'll it'll always work better with the green screen in the background. And if you do have a green screen, I would definitely recommend like turning on that checkbox we have that says I have a green screen, it will just work better. Like what Gage was just showing off was not the virtual backgrounds feature. That was like the core green screen feature. That's your best bet if you actually have a green screen still. But yeah, without it, obviously, the green screen option isn't, doesn't work too well. Malcolm, yeah, absolutely. Especially the, the bokeh effect I'm a big a big fan of like Dan has uh, has now because it, yeah, you can't quite make out exactly. I mean, you can kind of make it out, but it uh, it is a nice touch, I think. Yeah, it's very subtle. You almost don't even notice it until you turn it off. Like, let me let me just turn it off here. Yeah, <laughs> so you kind of forget that it's there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Agent Bay says, question, will there be a few, uh, future feature that will address transition between overlays such as fade in and fade out? Love the virtual backgrounds. Awesome. Agent, glad you're a fan. Uh, yes, absolutely. I don't know exactly how we'll go about 
implementing it, but we have a, a design team that's constantly prototyping and, and iterating and exploring uh, how we can improve things. And definitely that's one area where, where we'd like to uh, add a bit more flexibility, add a bit more um, flair, I guess, is the ability to, uh, to, to have cool transitions between things like overlay. So yes, we are exploring it. Uh, Tiffany says, uh, forever grateful to StreamYard. <laughs> Thanks, Tiffany. That's awesome. My small business Saturday live vendor event went perfectly, stayed live for six hours straight and kept each vendor slot as an individual recording uh, by deleting and reading the streaming locations. Cannot wait for next year's event. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Tiffany, congrats on a successful event. That's super cool. Cool. All right. Should we start? Uh, just to make sure we don't run out of time. Should we start loading up the, the giveaway, Dan? Let's do it. Just a sec. Uh Jose says, possible to show how much time remains in a video clip. This would be good for countdowns that don't have a visible timer. Uh, that's definitely something we'd like to add, uh, Jose, especially for guests who maybe are anticipating, like, oh, when am I? When is it going to cut back to, to me? It's it's something we'd like to add, absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah, for anyone, uh, for anyone who hasn't been to one of these, um, if you type in hashtag the yard, you'll be eligible to be part of the weekly giveaway that we do. We do one every single week. Uh, and tonight, uh, we'll be giving away that StreamYard sweater that uh, Dan has on. And we'll also give away uh, the StreamYard plush duck, which I think I still have a picture of. And we'll give away Puddles, Puddles the Duck in addition to uh, in addition to the sweater that, uh, that Dan has on. And we'll give you uh, – yeah, oh, you got it there too. We'll give you a uh, few – or maybe like a minute here to uh, to get your hashtag, the yards in. Yep, perfect. Jedi wants to look like I'm in an underwater kingdom with fish swimming, dolphins, and the occasional close call with a, a shark. That actually was, that's a good question is how many of you would be interested in now that there's virtual backgrounds, how many of you would you be interested in the ability for it to actually be a, a video based on this suggestion? I'm guessing it'd be, it'd be a cooler underwater kingdom if that was uh, the case. That would be my, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Cool. Yeah, I think the feedback on on great on uh, virtual backgrounds, people seem to be big fans. Very cool. Sweet. Um, my cluttered garage says, "Love using Streamer. It would be great to upload or reference audio to play uh, in the background." Any thoughts on that one, Dan? Yeah, it's definitely something we've considered. I might also be curious what type of audio is just like very subtle background music. Is this like an actual song where you want to stop talking for a few minutes and just play a song? Is it a sound effect? I was curious just to learn a bit more, but it is something we're exploring. Need to be careful on the copyright issues, so we want to make sure we do that nicely, but something we're interested in. Uh, Kansas Picker says, is there any limit to how many can be starred at the same time? I don't think so, right, Dan? No, I don't believe so. You probably don't want to star <laughs> 200 of them or else it'll just be like your normal chat, I'd imagine, but yeah, yeah. No, no limit. <laughs> all right should we go ahead and roll the uh giveaway in? i think so all right good luck everyone gabriel congrats thanks so much for for tuning in tonight uh dana bentz will reach out to you on on facebook to uh to, to get your information um and yeah you're the uh the winner of the stream yard sweater dan has on and that plush plush duck uh, thanks so much for for hanging out with us. Very cool. Congrats, Gabriel. Uh, White Fire Kingdom says, I use StreamYard on my Twitch channel and love it. It's helped me grow and would love to be a partner with them. Um, I don't hear about it being used on Twitch. So yeah, Twitch's partner program is is cool. It doesn't have it's it's not really connected to to StreamYard. It's separate. Um, and you have to go through Twitch's process for for that. Um, if, in, in terms of not, you don't hear about it being used on on Twitch. Streamer is definitely used on 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 Twitch. It's uh, pretty popular in the um, talk shows and podcast section, and um, what are the other popular sports? Just sports, chatting, sports, yeah. um, science and technology. So yeah, that you you'll, you'll definitely uh, if you explore some of those channels, you'll definitely see it being used. But yeah, you're not you're not alone. There's lots of Twitch. I'm curious if those in the chat, how many of you are are streaming on Twitch? Let us know. Uh, Pete says, infinite scrolling, used it this weekend during a live acoustic set to go back and find Super Chats. Worked great. Awesome. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, that would have been another one that was a pain without the uh, the infinite scrolling. Is missing missing Super Chats is no no fun. Yep. And now you can also star them if that's a better experience. I like the infinite scroll. That's my favorite thing. 
It's a subtle little feature, but if you need it, it's super useful. Uh, Malcolm says for picture and picture setup, I would love the ability to move people's screen so I can put people in each corner of the screen, but I love uh, the feature. Cool. Appreciate the feedback there, Malcolm. Um, can't guarantee anything specifically, but we are exploring uh, different ways to give more flexibility around layouts and, and things like that. Yeah. Jerome says, where are the new background settings? That's a great question, Jerome. I should have sh shared that when I uh, mentioned it. So if you just click settings uh, in the studio, uh, there's a settings wheel on the right and also at the bottom, they'll both take you to where you need to go. And then if you click virtual backgrounds, um, that's where you'll see all the options to, uh, to choose a background or if you have a green screen, check the green screen option. Yep, so it's basically exactly, if you ever know where green screen was before, we've just renamed the tab virtual backgrounds and there's an option in there as far as whether you wanna use the virtual background feature, like the AI based one that I was just using, or if you have an actual green screen. It's just a checkbox for that. Uh, Kurt says fold up oval, I just bought that blue and green side. Yeah, that's the exact one I have, Kurt, and I've been very happy with it. Great, great, yep. great screen. I don't know about you guys, but I always have so much trouble folding those things. <laughs> Yeah, I have to YouTube it every time. Every single even, time. Even while watching. You literally every time. Yeah. I've got to put it on like 0.5x speed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah it's not... like, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. It's I'm sure if you did thing. enough, you get used to it. But the first yeah, first few times, not not easy. But once you figure it out, it's very portable. Like, it's nice that it folds. It's up awesome. Inside. Yeah. It always scares me when you're unfolding it, too. Because, like, you know, you're kind of like. It explodes. And they just yeah. wait for like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just worried uh, you're going to like smash a window or something. Yeah, it's got some power behind it. Um, Agent Base says, I would like to see an autoplay playlist to trigger events such as videos followed with an overlay. Yeah, that's a cool, really cool idea, Agent. Um, and again, one of those things that, like I mentioned, we have uh, our design team exploring different flows and, and things we could do there. So uh, absolutely, we'll, we'll keep that in, in mind. Yeah, always trying to make things easier in general. It's like a huge, something we spend a lot of time on. That's super kind of you, uh, Mariano. Appreciate that. Glad, glad. It makes it all worth it that you guys uh, enjoy them. So we're happy to uh, happy to hear that. Uh, Jane says, "Will Streamer be adding a soft filter like Zoom has at some stage?" It's a good question, Jane. Um, like I imagine we filter? probably will, right, Dan? Sorry, go ahead. The beauty filter thing. Is that yeah, what I'm calling it? that's yeah. my guess. I, I think that if that's not what you mean, Jane, let us know. Cool. Yeah, definitely open to it. Yeah, now that we have virtual backgrounds, it's probably relevant typically easier for us to, to add, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll think it, we'll, we'll let the team know, James. All right. Um, time is quickly catching up to me. So the, before I forget, we also have the December 7th showcase for live selling and e-commerce. So it should be a really fun event. Uh, if you, if, if you're into live selling, if you have like a Shopify store, if you're curious about, uh, getting into live selling and e-commerce, you'll definitely want to check it out. I've got a, uh, a banner for it. Is it this one? I think it's this one. Yeah. If you just go to streamyard.com slash SY showcase, uh, the date on there is incorrect. So it's, it's December 7th. Uh, but if uh, you can RSVP there and get all the uh, the details, but it should be a fun event. Cool. And let's see if there's any other final notes. Oh, also uh, free holiday uh, graphics. So um, we the marketing team has been doing fun uh, graphics packages in the Facebook group. So if you're not in the Facebook community group, uh, definitely join and, and check out the, the most recent holiday package. And those of you that have grabbed it, curious if you're if you're fans of it, fans of it, and have been enjoying the uh, the, the graphics. Cool. And we're out of time now, but I also want to quickly mention uh, there was a brief issue with uh, LinkedIn Live, but the LinkedIn Live team was able to resolve it. Uh, if you were affected by the issue. Um, you should have received uh, an email with 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 some some uh, details, but fully fixed, uh, fully fixed now. Okay. All right. Let's see if there's any final things before we close things out. A couple, some feedback on slowing down the ticker. Thanks, uh, Donnell. We'll we'll definitely consider it. Uh, Ramon says, is there any use case with the Streamer and the ATEM Mini? Yeah, tons of people use Streamer with the ATEM Mini. Ramon, the main use case is if um, you want an easy way to do camera switching rather than having to open up multiple stream yards. You can essentially connect that ATM 10 mini to your computer, connect multiple cameras to the ATM mini and use that as your camera yep. switching device. All right, everybody, this was episode 152 of the StreamYard live town hall. Uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. It's been uh, super fun. And we'll see you next week at the same time.
Cool. See you next week, everyone.